Brian Duher. The only person new to it all is Mark Donnelly, who will play in the full forward line. But right throughout every line, they are replete with veterans of many successful campaigns. And in the Monaghan Hatchery, well, there's half a dozen chicks new to the championship. Brewster Cogburn, a.k.a. Dick Clerken, much will be expected of him. He leads the charge as captain from midfield. Should Conor McManus cut loose and Paul Finlay find form, then maybe, just maybe, he'll be crowing in 70 minutes' time. The man in the middle today for the second consecutive outing in Ulster, Meath Cormac Riley. He'd be better off in a wetsuit. And he wants to have a quick word with uh, both midfielders, Dick Clerken and Sean Cavanagh, just before the ball's thrown in. Uh, Martin, I've not seen this before, but he's stamping his authority early on, even before throw in. Yeah, definitely his mark. Just the interest in switches. Ryan McMenamin wearing number four is going to cent centre half forward, or centre half back, sorry, for Tyrone. Connor Gormley, yeah, going back in to pick up Paul Finley in, in the full back. So I said he'd be better off in a wetsuit. It was the kind of day when you walk up the Gorchin Road that you could meet a mackerel and the salmon discussing how fine a day it was. It's just tipping it down and we're off and running. The Ulster champions losing out in this possession stakes early on. It's uh, Owen Lennon who won it and wins the free. Brand Tour uh, holding on to the ball. This will now be taken by Stephen Golligley and uh, he launched a little bit of movement. Uh, Referee has told him to get back the required distance. Dick Clerk and the captain will make himself available in the opening minute here in uh, Oma. Paul Finlay, and there was a little nudge in Paul Finlay. Connor Gormley has been penalised, and it's an early opportunity, Martin, for uh, Monaghan to get off and running. Yeah, it's interesting just what they did there, Mark. They kicked the long ball into the full back lane. They're playing with a two man full forward lane inside Monaghan of Paul Finlay and Connor McManus getting the early ball in. And Paul, we said Conor Gormley's going to full back to pick up Paul Finley and Conor McManus is an easy chance here it's always good for a free taker Mark to get an easy chance for the first one 23 year old from uh, Clontibret that's an illustration of just uh, how much rain there is it has been washing all over the pitch here for the last three hours uninterrupted Conor McManus then in the absence of uh, Tommy Freeman, he will become the talisman. Straight over the black spot, just over a minute gone, and first blood to Monaghan, Martin. Yeah, it's just an interesting other, other movement that Monaghan make. David McKenna, who's only 19, Mark, plays on, on the 40. He's out on the 40, being picked up by Ryan McMenamin, he's playing on the 40, he's only young lad. There's a lot of talk on Monaghan about this lad. It'll be interesting to see how he copes with the conditions today. Yeah, just 19, young Daniel McKenna. Now, this is uh, Davy Hart, the manager's nephew, easily anticipated, dealt with... Uh, well, actually, he was robbed off. It was Desi Moan. It was good football initially from Sean Cavanagh. It's now in the arms of uh, Brian McGuigan. McGuigan has been fouled. And, Martin, uh, it's the kind of day when, given the conditions underfoot, I, I suspect we will hear the whistle more often than not. Yeah, you're right there, Mark. And I think the other thing that's very important for both teams is to play the ball to hand, keep the ball. If it hits the ground, it's going to skate off the ground. It's important to keep the ball to hand. We saw Sean Cavanaugh won in that ball really well and giving the ball inside to Brian McGuigan, who, who was fouled. So the least amount of mistakes, the team that makes the least amount of mistakes will probably win this match. Martin Penrose, he's started in every game in 2011 for Jerome. He has scored in every game of 2011. And that statistic continues over the top. It goes, we've two minutes, two, just over two on the clock. And one point of peace, both of them coming from the dead ball, Martin. Here we go. Yeah, we just see it here. Martin Penrose, very accurate, out of his hands. Conor McMahon has kicked the one for Monaghan off the ground, but Martin Penrose out of his hands. He feels maybe with the conditions and everything else, that's, that's the right kick to take take today. It's interesting we look at the two teams, Mark. I think I make it that there's seven of the Tyrone players, either 30 or over, where there's only one of the Monaghan players, 30, and that's Owen Lennon. Will that experience make a difference for Tyrone? Average age in Tyrone's just under 28 years of age. Average age of this Monaghan outfit, uh, just under 23 years of age. So, well, legs uh, may have a bearing by the end of this 70 minutes. It's Penrose who's foraging for it. It's Colin Walsh who's sticking to him. Colin Walsh is just a dogged little player, and that's gone uh, wide. And Martin Penrose bundles Colin Walsh over. Reminds me, Martin, of last year's Ulster final. For those who are watching or recall it, Colin Woods got the grips at one time. He had the arms around the throat of Brian Deher. He's a feisty little rascal. Yeah, he is. And Monon feels that, that he's good enough to put back in, in, into, the, into that area and to, to pick up Martin Premis that he did well in that match in the Ulster final last year. They've made switches in, in defence as, as well. We'll tell them to you later. Kieran Duffy with a quick ball and quickly onto it. Stephen Golligley. Brian Deher, we were told, is fit as a flea, is doing well to get back at him. Uh, given straight inside and now picked up by Conor McManus. McManus onto the right foot. That looks good. That is good. That's the first of the 
fulcrum play of the day. And Martin, that was just swift movement down this left, Frank. Good vision to pick out Golligley. He fastball in over the top, and it's a great score. Yeah, great score. They're playing very, very direct. We see Conor McManus here. We know how good he is. Uh, he gave Callum McCarron a ton of time in a club championship match a couple of years ago uh, between Con Turbert and Moore. And it's interesting that, that Mickey Hart has put put uh, Callum McCarron on him today. What are doing is Mark Downey, who's playing in, is inside the full forward lane, is coming out the field, uh, moving out and they're leaving the two man full forward lane inside. So far, Mark is working. So far, it's early days, but uh, you will recall last year's Ulster final when. Uh, so many actually had tipped Monaghan to cause an upset. It was Monaghan who made the brighter start in the opening 10 minutes before effectively they were strangled and beaten out the gate by Tyrone. The supporters had left Clonus uh, 10 15 minutes before the final whistle. This was uh, Aidan Cassidy who was in possession to Brand Duher. Duher was looking for Peter Hart. Peter Hart won't get there. Good anticipation from Desi Moan. Just hoofs it forward. It's uh, into the arms of Mark Downey if he can hold on to it. Now that will be a free. The free was uh, poor one as it had been intercepted by Philip Jordan, the man who had talked about retiring. We thought he was going to retire four times an all-star. Gives it to the loping stride of Sean Kavanagh. Kavanagh's back inside to Donnelly. Lovely football to Kavanagh. Kavanagh tackled while kicking the ball. That was illegal. The point has gone over the bar. Referee uh, will give it, so it's two points apiece. Well worked score. The tackle was decidedly dodgy. Martin to the naked eye. We'll get another look at it. No, we won't. We'll stay with play. This is... Uh, Dick Clerken and the referee, as Sean Kavanagh requires treatment off camera, has called for the ball to be returned. Uh, you know, and, and the new rules, Martin, of course, uh, introduced last year through Congress, you couldn't, you, the shoulder to shoulder tackle is fine as long as the player's not kicking. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, we see it here again. The ball laid back by Mark Donnelly, back to Sean Kavanagh. This is where he's really, really good at the way he pushed through. And just as, he, as he's kicked, kicked the ball, See it. He kicked the ball, end up kicking the ball over the bar. It's hard to see it with, with players there. Yeah. He seemed to be taken out late. It's interesting the referee didn't give a yellow card there. There's a forest of players. I'm not even quite sure who got that late tackle, uh, but it was, uh, in any event, the score stands. It's two points of preach. Brian Duher gives it to Brian McGuigan. Nice hand in from Desi Moan, and uh, there was a push in the back also, he says. So uh, it will be taken by McGuigan. McGuigan and well worked Stephen O'Neill to Sean Cavan and named it midfield. He's in that roving role to little Peter Hart, touched on the ground. Will be a free the way of Monaghan referee. Right up with play, Cormac Riley. Was to Dick Clerken to take this one. Clerken wants movement. Mark Downey had presented for it, has given it short. One to the return. Uh, wide left of him here is Kieran Duffy. Duffy working his way laterally back inside. Moan just content to. Dink it now, out wide right to Owen Duffy. Owen Duffy, not a great deal ahead of him. He's confronted by Peter Hart, so swift low ball. Paul Finlay was always going to be second best. That Connor Gormley is, who's uh, in possession. Now with Brian Duher to Ricey McMenamin, the old guard working in triplicate. And as I say that, Ricey sees it spill out of his hands. Well won by Mark Downey. Mark Downey in turn wins the free. Intensity for Monaghan's impressive early on, Martin. Yeah, they're working hard. Monaghan has said they're playing the two-man full forward lane. They're trying, that time they kicked the low ball, and I think they're better kicking the high ball in because Connor Gormley's playing. Paul Finley from in front. Good work. Ricey McMenon won the ball. He didn't tuck it in well enough and was knocked out of his hands. They're working really hard, Monan. Well, Paul Finley, uh, he thought about taking this one off the carpet. He's opted now to take it out of the hands. This one, well, we're eight minutes into the game, and this to nudge Monaghan back in front. Finley named and playing at full forward. Big Packy McConnell not even here can get his hand on that one. So they lead by three points to two, and uh, they are value for that lead, Martin. Yeah, they, they are. It's just interesting to see Paul Finley again. Same as Martin Premier's, maybe the left-footed players like to kick the ball mark out of their hands. It's interesting in the programme, the superstition is he always goes to Mass a day, a day of a match, so didn't do him any harm today. No, his uh, prayers will certainly be answered if they're one in front in about uh, 63 minutes' time. At first, we've seen him with a very short kick out. To Cahill McCarm was under a little bit of pressure. Davy Hart to relieve that pressure. Nice McMenamin uh, and he's been blown for over carrying, and that's a pretty basic error, Martin. It was a bad error, but he felt that he needed Davy Hart thought somebody was going to come off his shoulder and he tried to play it up the field but he should have taken the solo out of it and he got caught and I mean fair enough he did overcarry the ball mark and Conor McManus then who has placed it on the ground looking for his uh, third point looking to steer Monaghan into double figures lead he's oh, 37 38 more meters out 10 to the left of the post into a heavily umbrellaed bank of fans at that far end and that's great contact 
Over it goes Martin. A beautifully executed free kick. Yeah, so we still say, is it better to kick them out of your hands or kick them off the ground? Frees are going to be very important today, Mark. We see it here off the ground. I, I always like to see a player able to strike a ball, particularly in wet conditions like that off the ground. Could score. I mean, it's important to roll and start holding on to possession. That's two mistakes. Ricey McMenamin lost the ball coming out, and then Davy Hart got blown for over carrying and Monin have punished them with two frees. Packy McConnell kicked. Uh, Dick Clerken was holding on the shoulder. Sean Kavanagh had risen to win it, but was... Uh, Illegally climbing, so Cormac Riley has blown over that. Philip Jordan uh, wanted to take it quickly. Bram McGuigan's being held off camera inside the referee <laughs> would need uh, half a dozen pair of eyes. This is Ricey McMenna, who at times does appear to have half a dozen pair of eyes. Ricey's ball will do well to stay in play. It was off the instep of the boot, and there was just too much on it. And maybe, just maybe, Martin, they're getting to the grips. Uh, with the conditions and the pace earlier on, but a few basic errors we made. Yeah, making basic errors, and this race is second. Basic error, he's made, he kicked that ball out over the line, and he got caught in possession early on. Dick Clerken. Darren Hughes named at fullback, and that's the high ball which Paul Finlay reckoned, uh, you reckon Martin would favour. Finlay did well just to wrestle there. Finlay's taking a swipe at it! Well, that was Champions League stuff, and uh, why not, Martin, given the conditions, and why not given that it presented itself, and what was uh, impressive there was he was coming from behind, did well to win it, and uh, here's... Talk us through from here. Yeah, you actually see it. Conor Gormley's trying to play Paul Finley from in front, and the high ball would cause a problem if they keep kicking And Darren Cuse, you said, is playing wing half back, even though he's wearing number three, kicked down the high ball. It's causing problems with the two-man full forward in that high ball, Mark. Yeah, I think, to be fair to Big Packy, he, he definitely had it covered. He got there about five minutes before the ball, but it was worth a go from Paul Finley. Neil McAdam. Duffy to Clerken. Clerken looks for the runner. That runner's the half back. Connor Galligan. Galligan now back outside of him as Darren Hughes, as Martin pointed out, named at full back, but certainly not playing there. Good tackle in there from Martin Penrose. Penrose uh, then in turn has found, and this will be Monaghan's ball. We're nearing the 10th, 11th minute, and it's just uh, skidded off the surface, and Darren Hughes, has he done enough just to keep it in? Yes, he has. That's the second one we've seen hoiked along the ground. It's the kind of day, given the conditions where we might expect goals. Good composure from Cahill McCarran to Brian Deher, and continues the run. There's no one down the right flank, so forced to check back inside. Now Sean Cavanagh in position. Connor Cormley's on a rare forward furry. This is uh, Connor Gormley. Goggly closes the door. Neat pass over the top from Connor Gormley. Sean Cavanagh's gone to ground, and that will be a foul. Martin. I thought Conor Gormley was lucky there to get away that looked like a throw ball, but the referees this year are not blowing any hands. Stephen O'Neill gives it back inside to Bram McGuigan, still Bram McGuigan, looking for goal, McGuigan! I think he was going for goal, Martin, but he'd settle for the point. He was going for goal, he was going to attack the team because they're causing problems to the Monon full back then when they get, get that early ball in here. See it here again, laid off by Stephen O'Neill to Bram McGuigan, that experience. Desi Moan should have held up, he should have used his body to make the tackle. Right him to him, Bram McGuigan definitely going for goals, good cover as Conor Walsh came across. Good finish by Brian McGuigan. Tyrone, three points, Monaghan, four points. It's McGuigan once more looking to draw them level. Dizzy Moon got a neat little hand in there. Ball spills kindly. Dick Clerk and Hank picked it off the ground. Referee didn't see it in any event. It's uh, anyone's ball. It's Monaghan's now. The whistle has uh, sounded now. Dick Clerken will take that free. Clerken back outside of him is Darren Hughes. Brian Dure, a little bit late, a little bit high with the tackle. Hughes to his eternal credit. Stays on his feet and off he shunts straight through the middle looking for movement east or west of him. Instead of that, he goes straight for Gallagher. It was the wrong ball. This is going to be won by Davy Hart to Connor Gormley. Connor Gormley now, and Sean Cavanagh is calling for it 30 metres in front of him. Gormley sees him, gives an intelligent low ball down this right flank. Sean Cavanagh has the time just to dink it up and uh, will mount another meaning from attack from uh, midfield. Alongside him is Martin Swift. It's given back inside now to uh, the other midfielder, who is Aidan Cassidy. Cassidy's ball, oh, that's brilliantly won. It's won by Mark Donnelly. Donnelly has a man over his prime McGuigan. This time the goal presents itself. This time it's tossed out of his hands. And Connor Galligan clears his lines, but Jerome were almost in on goal, and it looked like a second goal opportunity. Martin will bring you in shortly. We will stick with play. Monaghan living ever so dangerously. That's their full forward, Paul Finley, way back there to Dick Clerken. Dick Clerken, a lot of room in around this middle third of the field. Away spins Owen Duffy. Duffy now with the runner. The runner is Lennon. Lennon and there's been a foul spotted off the ball again by Cormac Riley. Martin, I'm not sure if this is the linesman who's linked up to him telling him this because I, it was brilliant vision to see that, but Cal McCarn is going to receive a booking and that foul was obviously on Conor McManus. Yeah, we see the tackle there. What a tackle by Desi Moan. 
just he dived in, he got his hand to the ball. That's a goal saving tackle and makes a big difference. Instead of having a goal in one end, they're up the field now in the free end the other end. And you're right, Mark. I think the referee looked up the field, he saw it. Cal McCarran was holding on to Connor McManus. As you said in the comedy, Paul Finley had gone right out the field to leave the space in. Tyrone didn't get players back because they were attacking. And the ball, the one to one situation, when Cormac Riley looked up, he saw that, that Connor McManus had been held and uh, broken and an easy chance. So Conor McManus then, what could have been a two points deficit, could now turn into a two points lead. There was a great tackle, as Martin pointed up back there, from Desi Moore. McManus, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's effective football, Martin, from on, and tactically, these first opening 15 minutes, they've got it right. Yeah, but you'd have to say, Mark, at this stage, and look, when we look, take a look at the watch, what, 14 and a half minutes gone, that they're own creating problems for the Monon fullbacks, so it's important from Monon's point of view that they keep one on ball in that midfield area. Point taken, break favours Neil McAdam, Neil McAdam wants and gets a movement, that's a nice little left foot at ball, dink for Conor McManus, it was off the foot of Mark Downey, in any event, it spilled back to Tyrone with uh, Mr. Here, he's there, he's everywhere, Brian Duher to Stephen O'Neill, the man from the Dunhamana Hills combining, Stephen O'Neill's ball is a good one inside for Mark Donnelly, Donnelly has been uh, bundled over and uh, Conor Gallagher is having a tough time on Donnelly Martin. Yes, yeah, a tough, tough time, Donnelly really going well inside, but it's the quality of the ball and, and, and you have to give credit to uh, the full back then, that time they cut out the ball, the thrown full back line, it's really well cut out, see the ball in here, Donnelly, they're going to take them on. Monon are problems in their full back line, so it's important for Tyrone to get the ball in, into that area early. Conor Galligan, even though he's wearing number five, he's playing in the in, in the full back. Yeah, so um, it's interesting that Darren Cuse and that's a full back. It's not in the full back then. They're playing him at right, right half half back in that area. I feel maybe they thought Sean Cavanaugh was going to line out in wing half forward and they played him there. But freeze we talked about Mark's going to be important. And the midfield area is very important because both full forward lanes have the beating of their men. Persistent fouling and uh, Conor Galligan has picked up a yellow card. He joins uh, Cattle McCarran as uh, Martin Penrose attempts to put one point between them. Never really in doubt. Another one for Tyrone, another one for Ahayarn. And uh, we're near the midpoint of this opening half. And Martin, you would have to say, given the conditions, it's actually a fine game of football today. That's Dermot Carlin, who's coming in. And it's Cal McCarron, who's on a yellow card, has paid the price for that, Martin. Mickey Hart ain't messing around. No, no messing around. I think you get a yellow card. That's where you've been taken off. He's taken no chances. He doesn't want to be down to 14 men. Dermot Carlin, who has been going really well for his, for his club, and uh, that's a move Mickey Hart always does that when a player gets booked, so it's important you hold your discipline. So Dermot Carlin into the match. Well won in the middle by uh, Peter Hart, who is picking up the brakes, gives it across to Brian Duher. That was the 20-year-old to the 35-year-old, the youngest and the oldest combining. Here's the well-garlanded four-times All-Star, Philip Jordan, and despite those four All-Stars, he can occasionally get it wrong too. Yeah, he does. It's just interesting watching him running there, Mark. He looks to be limping a bit. You know, he hasn't played a lot of football. Normally, Jordan, that'll be bread and butter for him, Mark, just to knock that ball over the bar. And, you, know, you can take the conditions and everything else, but good movement. Well won, breaking ball by Peter Hart. L laid it off on the good good ball inside from Brian Duhar inside to Philip Jordan. But normally, he would kick them over the bar in the sleep. Very laboured, uh, or a, as you say, laboured in the stride, Martin. You're right to observe that. That's going to spill over the sideline, and uh, this would be Brian Duhar's ball. The rain still teeming down, it's unrelenting. Darren Hughes couldn't hold on to it. Desi Moan can at the... It's Peter Hart who I think committed the foul. It's Owen Duffy who gives it straight across. This is a good ball into the path of Kieran Duffy, the little cornerback from Latin. Oh, good football from Duffy. That said, he's run into trouble. Been well held up by uh, Aidan Cassidy. And Aidan Cassidy, good, strong midfield play. Cassidy to Hart. Hart, and look at the space with which Stephen O'Neill finds himself. Still he goes, unchallenged, across to McGuigan. McGuigan! The goal was coming. McHugh had predicted it. Tyrone have rattled the old onion bag. And Martin, they have had three opportunities. He's taken the third with precision and with a polish and with a plum. Yeah, we see it here. An experienced player, Stephen O'Neill, he got it, he knew, he looked up and where did he see? He knew the goal chances on, that's a great sign of a team when they do that there. Brian McGuigan, you're right, has had three chances, he put one of them over the bar, the other was a great tackle by Desi Moan, that aim with his 
weak left foot or his weaker left foot. He hammered into net. What a mistake by Owen Duffy out the field when he lost the ball, Mark. He should have kicked the long ball down the field. He's losing it to Tyrone will punish you now. There's a Monon player down injured. Yeah. But Brian McGuigan, it's interesting where he's playing, Mark. If you look at he's playing off the two men inside, he's pushing into that danger area. Yeah, and, and the point, Martin, although we're looking at the moment at Colin was. Stephen and his role in that was incredible. A lesser player would have gone for the point, and Mickey Hart will know that. That's the vote of confidence in the older brigade from the management as we look on. Yeah, that's, ex that's exactly, and you're right there, Mark. And the other thing about it, you look at people who said maybe he shouldn't have played the Doers and the O'Neills and these players, but he's playing them. He wants to find out about them. Even they're beaten here today, they're in the back door. He looks at it like that there. It's another game for them. They won today, get beaten the next day out there in the back door. So, look, at Mick, Mickey Hart's put faith in, in, the, in these players, and I mean, definitely, Doers playing really well for him. And O'Neill looks as sharp as, as we've seen him in a while. And McGuigan has definitely been very dangerous. He's going to have a hat to get goals already. Uh, Kieran Duffy at the minute. Uh Having a full scale conversation <laughs> with Stephen O'Neill, but Stephen O'Neill's been around for too long now to allow his game to be disrupted by a little bit of uh, verbals. I think O'Neill's just telling them what happened to you up the field there, Kieran, when you were up the field. How did you lose that ball? It's, it's all part of Gaelic football now, these verbals, Mark. So, Colin Walsh, meantime, is still receiving treatment, and uh, there they are, Monaghan's Navy Seals. It's a sub aqua Canada on the Gorchin Road. Brian McGuigan has scuba dived his way through for the game's opening goal. Mark, the point you make is Stephen O'Neill, in fact, another player would have knocked the ball over the bar. That's the big thing. He's, he really looked up, he saw the chance that the goal was on. That, that's the sign of a great player. Just saw a shot of Eamon McEnany back for a second stint in charge, managed uh, Monaghan in the uh, mid 90s, 96 to 99. This is colloquially, they're not certainly out of it. The goal will have rocked him. This is Owen Duffy with Bram McGuigan, who's just uh, found the net a couple of minutes ago. Now back tackling and dispossessing. Rising McMenamin's in there too. It was touched on the ground, so good foraging from Tyrone. And uh, 20 minutes of the opening half gone. Tyrone lead by two points. One goal and four. Tyrone five points. It is for Monaghan. Big Packy McConnell. No matter how much it rains, it'll never come up above his ankles. Brand to her. Devon Carlin's ball. Connor Gormley. Brian McGuigan, it's going to skid. Mark Penrose will do well if he can keep this in control. And Colin Walsh uh, pushes him over. That was a foul, and the referee hasn't given it. Uh, he was maybe just a little bit uh, far away in any event. Mark Penrose gets the benefit of the break. He's going to go a lone great block by Walsh. He got a dive on that. It's going to go out for a 45. But Tigris in the tackle, Martin. And uh, he, he was dogged. He stuck to him. Yeah, he did. It did. Good play by Pemrose. I mean, considering the conditions and everything else, important to get the ball to hands. Interesting, in fairness, both teams know not many players. Yeah, you're right, there was a free in there. Conway was lucky to get away with it. Maybe there was a free out then, but Pemrose ended up getting getting the ball. Maybe she just squared it, went for a score off his left foot, and it was a great block by, by, by Young Walls. Kidnana, doesn't mark Monon have got five points, four of them have been front place balls. And uh, Peter Hart, one of the few. Uh, all-Ireland minor winners from 2008, Martin, who's been able to force his way onto this team. It's difficult if you're a young player in Tyrone. That's why he's there. For the first time, they open up a three-point gap. It's interesting. I suppose something in the past the lack mark was a long-range free kicker. Mickey Hart put trust in, in, in Peter to kick that and a great score again with the conditions, underfoot conditions. Paul Finlay, we haven't seen a oh, great, great work from Connor Gormley. He made up 10, maybe more yards there and just got the tackle in. It's almost as if the Euler fellas, Martin, have a point to prove in Tyrone that they are, uh, in terms of durability and fitness, Finlay. To Lennon. Bit of space now for Dizzy Moan. Good ball for McManus. McManus been picked up by Dermot Carlin. Carlin is uh, snapping at him rather ravenously. To the extent, good quick free, and it's inside now to Downey. This is better football. That's McManus. One by Philip Jordan, and Jordan has been fouled. 
Maybe he took the free kick too hurriedly, Martin. It was in a scorable position. Yeah, you're right. And Paul Finley had scored one from that area earlier on, Mark. He should have left on the ground. Again, with the conditions, I mean, it's better to do when you won the free leave it on the ground. Toronto got 1 2 without the play in this match. Peter Hart uh, blitzes his way past Desi Moon. Peter Hart is Sean Kavanagh running off his right flank, but he's been beaten by the uh, lack of bounce in the pitch, just given how sudden the sod is. Brian McGuigan gives it back to Peter Hart. Hart hangs it up and hangs it wide. And uh, it should have gone over, Martin, and it would have meant that they would have led by double figures. Yeah, it was actually a goal chance. He should have turned with him. McGuigan has got great vision. You see, Hardy Gazi, he's, see, watch McGuigan's vision here. Just gives it, splits the whole defence. Hard to the pitch was in front of him instead of kicking, kick hurriedly. But maybe that's an experience. He bounced the ball when he shouldn't have bounced on the ground, and maybe he you know, kicked too hurriedly. But if it had come to one of the more experienced players, that could have been a second goal mark. Short kick out one by Darren Hughes, given off to Neil McAdam. Neil McAdam has been bundled over. Dick Clerken will take the free. Stephen Golligley was, uh, well, he's on his knees <laughs> with the off camera, just having a bit of an argy bargy with. Philip Jordan, Stephen Gold, they had a rattle at Philip Jordan off camera there. Now I saw it with the naked eye, and the referee, the referee has been called over by his linesman, Pori Hughes, on this near side. But what exactly happened, Martin, is while they were waiting for the free, there was a little bit of nudging and toing throwing. The free was then taken. Philip Jordan decides to go running toward the ball. Golly took a swipe at him, and Pori Hughes saw it. It was interesting, we just see, see Carmack McGregor, the referee, over talking to Parry Cues. Stephen Gill, we, we were watching there, he was just down on one knee, wanted treatment. I think Jordan was just standing beside him. But I suppose we would give a bit of credit to Philip Jordan that he didn't go down or anything else, he didn't make no meal of, of it anything else. Just be interested to see what, what referee. The big decision he's saying is probably is it a yellow card or is it a red card? Parry Cues was the well, man that, I, that saw it down below us. I have to say that uh, it was all rather innocuous, Martin, but I suspect that it will be yellow. now. Cormac Riley, as Stephen Golligley is going across, is he's he's going, going off. to change his gloves, is he? No, he's gone off. The injury, whatever injury he picked up, he's gone off. <laughs> is that, now, is that, a, is that a substitution? Is that, oh, it's a substitution. <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> in, in theory, what would have happened had he been going to pick up a red card? They would have been down to 14 men. But now, that is as cute a piece of management as I have seen. So I'm just going to Philip Jordan here to see what he what he's picking up. It's a yellow card for Philip Jordan, and I think that's all. That's, that's the only action. But yeah, if he had, <laughs> the referee was making a decision to give them both cards. I think he would still have to go over and take him back, and 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 and, and I think Mark send up send him off if that was going to happen. But I think it's only Jordan picked up the yellow card. Yeah, definitely. I've never ever seen that happen in a game of Championship football before, where the referee's attention had been alerted to the fact that one of the players was involved in a bit of an old shemozzle. He was then sub while the ref was attempting to clarify what happened so the Tyrone guy ends up picking up a yellow card and is punished for that the Monaghan guy gets off scot-free and they have a player on the field who is in no yellow cards tactical genius Martin it's James Turley for the record who is uh, on and here's uh, uh, just uh, the referee now speaking to Cassidy and Owen Lennon and uh, the yellow card count is climbing Yellows for both. Martin, a bit this is the now. incident just here. What's number seven on the left of your screen? This is Stephen Golligley slap. And, it, you know, it's difficult to know, but it was a yellow card. Philip Jordan did not seem like the aggressor there. Oh, is what right. I'm saying. Looking at that there, that was actually a red card. It's a strike. Right, Stephen McMahon in the meantime drops it short, but uh, it's. Uh, it's a debating point, and <laughs> it's, it's a new one on me. Brian Duher, and Duher has it slapped free from him by uh, Daniel McKenna. Gets help from Davy Hart to Philip Jordan. Philip Jordan, who is on a yellow card, being hauled to the ground by James Turley. This will be a free. Go on, Justin Mark. You just said Philip Jordan's a yellow card. Well, Mickey Hart takes Philip Jordan off now. When he, maybe it's only the people in the full back lane he takes off that are on yellow cards. Would you take him off? No. <laughs> Dick Clerken and Sean Kavanagh have been called over here. Referee is now speaking to Dick Clerken and Sean Kavanagh, neither of whom are on yellow cards, but that would be all four midfielders, I imagine, on yellows. And the yellow, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yellow cards. And the man who was lauded for his handling of the Armagh Down game, Martin, uh, uh, it's difficult to rate his assessment. and nearing the half hour mark here but he sure is uh, flashing a flurry of yellow cards 
Yeah, he is. It's interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll be finished this game with, with 30 players on the field, Mark. Philip Jordan, lovely pick up by Jordan. It was uh, Neil McCallum who was along with him. Gives it into Davy Hart. Davy Hart scuffed it and just screws that one slightly wide. So, as I say, almost uh, into the half hour. It's Jerome 1 5, Monaghan 5 points. We've had a litany of yellows. That's two easy chances. Both Hearts have missed. Peter Hart had an easy chance of point. Davy Hart should have carried on there. He's naturally right footed. He tried to kick it over the bar of the left. But Tyrone have got completely on top in that midfield area, Mark. Sean Cabinet. Desi Moan doing his best to hold up Brian McGuigan. Brian McGuigan is a man reborn. And uh, right, Cormac Riley. Dick Clerkin could be in bother here. Dick Clerkin hit Sean Cabin in late, Mark. And it's just painting to see what happens here. He's going over to the referee, he's going over to the linesman, and Dick's going over there himself. It's gone. Looks like Clerkin could be the first to walk. He's gone. Dick Clerkin is gone. Monaghan are minus their captain. And he wears an incredibly frustrated look, but there was an inevitability about it, Martin. Yeah, what well, he's trying to do is stop Sean Cavanaugh making the runs, right? A manager will tell a player to do that, but when you're on a yellow card, it's a dangerous thing to do. I mean, maybe we say they're lucky they're not down to 13, or at this stage, but they're down to 14. And I mean, the referee had no option but to send him off. Sean Cavanaugh to take the uh, free, the re and he's uh, put it wide. Yeah, 29 year old from Curran. Handed the captaincy a few days ago. Vinnie Corey, of course, is out injured. It's well, probably not the quickest. Just take a look at this again, Martin. Just on the edge of his shot here. Here we go. Uh, what he's trying to do is stop making the second run, Mark. This was happening. Just have a lot of it in Gilly Fogel, but the yellow cards have has cut that out. So, after, I mean, he picked up the yellow card, what, a couple, about a minute ago when he picked up the, the second one. Sean Cavanaugh picks out Davy Hart. Davy Hart was. Uh, Billowing through the middle, and that was a foot tackle. And uh, it's uh, Connor Gallagher, I think, who's going to be penalised. And this will be a free for Tyrone. Stephen and Neil and Colin Walsh get the grips of one another. And uh, well, Martin, it's it's degenerating. Yeah, it is. Monon have lost their discipline. After they started really well, Monon. What were they? Five three up at a stage, and now it's one five, five to five. But and this is an easy chance. And Sean Cavanagh, Sean Cavanagh going to tap this ball over the bar. But Monon have lost their discipline. I mean, you know, you have to be fired up and everything else for Gilly Fuppel. But if when you go over the top, top, and it's just so disappointing. Their own player now um, lying down in front of the goals. Man has gone down. I think that's Martin Penrose. And now there was another little slap in there, and that's Connor Gallagher and Walsh here in there, and now. There's a bit of sorting to be done. Penrose and Kieran Duffy with uh, Brian Duhar doing his best to just uh, add some chill. Mark, it's terrible stuff. It's turned out. Yeah, it's getting ugly and, and farcical. And it's just, I mean, I mean considering the conditions, I mean, I thought it's okay for, for, for what the first 15, 16 minutes of the game. Since the goal went in, you know. Monon and the referee. Up and it's interesting to see what he does. He's gone into the umpire, isn't he? He's having a word, Martin, in there. And it's yellow for Darren Hughes. I think it was Darren Hughes. Connor Gallagher was also in shot, but it's yellow for Darren Hughes. Uh, the point I'll make to you, Martin, from a footballing term point of view, is that, that Monaghan have now gone almost 18 minutes since they last scored. Uh, the game's away from them. Yeah, it's gone away from them. This is going to put, put four points in this easy tap over. And I mean, considering that the, the threat wasn't their full forward line, and now what's the situation? We're watching out here. Racy McMenamin goes back in front of that full, full back line. John Kavanagh sticks it over the top. Uh, we've about two minutes gone. Bram McGuigan is uh, receiving treatment. Uh, and uh, well, his breathing is a little laboured there. And uh, I don't know whether or not it's his vision, Martin. He will. He, he, he does wear the contact lenses. Of course, he had that really, really serious eye problem. And uh, he definitely appears to be in a fair degree of discomfort. In any event, he will be happy enough with the scores on the doors. It's Tyrone 1-6, it's Monaghan 5 points, and uh, this is casted to Stephen O'Neill. Stephen O'Neill with from a very acute angle. Whoa. There's the Stevie we all know and love. That's Great exactly. score. Great that's score, it. Martin. Yeah, that's exactly it, Mark. That's the Stevie O'Neill that we knew. I mean, maybe the, bre the, the wee break has helped him a lot, and uh, the wee cuts inside the left foot. We always know how accurate his left foot. See it here. 
Yeah. Uses yep. his body, knocked off the ball and kicked his left foot. That's the, the Stephen O'Neill of old, Brian McGuigan. I was just looking at him there and he looks physically very strong. He seems to have maybe done a big weight programme and he was playing really, really well. He was. Monaghan. Now trailed by double scores. They are five adrift. This is Finlay. They badly need to find the white post. Neil McCadam gives it through to Darren Hughes. He must go low. There's a little nudge Penalty. on there from Davy Hart. The referee's whistle is sounded. It is okay. just outside and it will be a free but another another six inches, Martin, and it would have been a penalty. Talk us through it. Yes, Darren Hughes, the wing halfback, breaking up the field again. And yeah, definitely a free, there's no doubt about it. And we just see it was outside. Yeah, it was just outside, and the referee to his credit, spot on, spot on. Maybe Darn Q should have taken another solo out of the ball. Yeah. He well, had a better chance for the goal if he'd take the extra solo when he was ahead, ahead of the player going through. What it will do, Martin, in the final minute of this opening half, it, it will stop the rot. It will put four between them, and it will be Conor McManus to strike it over the top. He's accounted for four. He's accounted for five now of their scores. And uh, that's Monaghan six points. Tyrone won seven. And we are uh, nearing the short whistle as the short kick out is taken. It was comfortably dealt with by Martin Swift, filtered back through the arms of Ricey McMenamin. McMenamin to Swift once more. It's now with the. Uh, Brian McGuigan, it's good to see him back on the field of play. McGuigan down the left flank looking for Ricey McMenamin. Oh, coughed up by Conor Galligan and coughed up cheaply. And this is uh, Mark Donnelly. Donnelly, a little maybe too casual from Stephen O'Neill. And it will be a free the way of Monaghan. Martin is a. Uh, we were giving McEnany, Eamon McEnany, the, the Monaghan manager, credit for taking off the player very quickly before the potential of the red card, but there's very little, I think, that he can do now tactically. When you look to the big names that are gone, the likes of the two Freeman brothers, Vinnie Corey out injured, and now Dick Clerken, uh, and he's blooding six or seven new to championship. In terms of the bench, it's very difficult to know how you might stop Tyrone. What he has to do is run the ball now, because Tyrone are playing an extra pair back, so the best thing to do, rather than kick it in long, is try to run the ball and get the runners like he did with Darren Cuse with that last chance. Daniel McKenna. To Paul Finlay. Finlay. And gets the return. And time to unlock his Tyrone defence. Conor Galligan does provide the run from deep, and Conor Galligan's shot will tail wide, and we're into the second minute of time added on. He has some talking to do, and some uh, thinking to do. Ricey McManaman's ball to Brian Duher. Brian Duher now confronted by Owen Duffy, sprays it down the right flank. Brian McGuigan happy to let the bounce win. Looks for Stephen O'Neill, and Stephen O'Neill's ball was anticipated and cleverly cut out. This is Darren Hughes. Darren Hughes gives it to Neil McAdam. McAdam will do well to get there ahead of Sean Cavanagh. Sean Cavanagh happy to uh, just hold them up, but has uh, fouled them. Has fouled them just to tackle the round of midriff. And uh, we are into the third minute of time to be added on. It will be Neil McAdam who takes the uh, free. I think it will be. Uh, Get it in high and see if uh, Finlay and or McManus can get on the end of this one. But Paul Finlay has come out considerably deep, looking for the short ball, maybe to give the return that he has done. It goes back to Neil McAdam. McAdam now to Owen Lennon. Owen Lennon rounds in Cassidy, goes to ground. It was touched on the ground. And I think the halftime whistle has sounded. It has sounded with Tyrone not in complete control, but... Uh, Largely dominating the second half of the first half, if you like, and uh, it uh, was all down to that McGuigan goal. It turned the tide, and right now there is a massive ask for Paul Finlay and the 14 of Monaghan. Halftime score here in Oma. It's Tyrone 1 7, Monaghan 6 points. No greater love has the Tyrone fan than the love of the elements. The rain is tipping it down. And Monaghan are in danger of tripping out of the championship in Ulster. Well, it's a day which is freighted and weighted with poignancy for Mickey Hart, his ninth championship season. And, of course, without the bubbly Michaela, 
doubtless she will be shadowing the sidelines with him. Second half then is underway, and it's as it was in the first, it's own Lennon who wins possession. It's route one, it's cut out by Ryan McManaman. Uh, happy to carry it out of defence is Ricey McManaman. Now gives it into the path of Martin Swift. Swift's ball was intended for Hart and uh, gets it at the second pick. Owen Lennon was high referee, indicating that advantage will be played. Cassidy's ball, and Cassidy's ball has been given rather cheaply away to Paul Finley. Finley has been bundled over by Connor Gormley. And this is an opportunity in the first minute of the second half for Paul Finlay to reduce the gap to three points. It was uh, untypical of Tyrone Martin. A very poor handling by Tyrone. It was Mon and won the ball in the middle of the field and kicked the long high ball in, but the, the spare man back there just knocked down to Ricey McMenamin. He picked it up. Easy chance for Finlay. Over it goes. I think uh, that's point number seven, and uh, all of them have come from. Uh, just the two different sources, Paul Finlay and Conor McManus. Yeah, Mark, and only one point from play, but there's still only that kick of a ball in the game now. Short kick out, Tyrone, of course, uh, playing with the advantage of an added man. Monaghan having lost their captain, Brian Duher it was, who was bundled over by Owen Duffy. Duher can spot that uh, there are options, and one of them is Davy Hart. Duher gets it back. Bram McGuigan was providing a decoy run. Ryan McMenamin now will work it all the way across into the path of Martin Swift. Swift looks for Connor Gormley. Finley is alongside Connor Gormley. Got a point last year in the Ulster final, and the same fixture did Connor Gormley. And foul has been committed. And it's. He's had an impressive championship debut, Mark Donnelly, Martin, but at 27, it says something about Tyrone, the fact that the, these these veterans, if you like, are not giving up the shirts easily. Yeah, and I think, as you said early on, Mark, Peter Hart's the only under-21 player that's, that's made the break through. But last weekend, our man down, he had no under-21 player playing. Wexford even played last, last weekend in the Leinster Championship with no under-21 player, so the players are getting older. Sean Cavanagh. It's at 28. I suppose we can refer to Sean Cavan as a veteran. It's his 55th championship outing today, Martin. At, at 28, you would imagine he could go on and, and break the 70 barrier. Not even Brian Duhar has done that. Uh, he's, he's, he's just a fine footballer. Yeah, and very, very fit, which is important in the modern-day football that you have to be extremely fit. Owen Lennon. Brian McGuigan is uh, the man who held him up. Peter Hart is in there, so too is Brian Duhar. Well won by Brian McGuigan. McGuigan was... Uh, Tugged back just into McGuigan wants the ball himself, and he was a player, Martin. He was thinking about giving it all up, Brian McGuigan. I suppose he, having gone through what he had gone through, you would have thought about it yourself. Uh, just uh, so unfortunate was he with uh, serious injuries. Great ball from McMenamin to Penrose, and that was the judge to have been thrown. Aidan Cassidy was bursting his way through, and Martin Penrose blowing up for the offload, which the ref said was illegal. It's interesting that it was a league and we talked about the Conor Gormley one. The first half was the one I thought it was definitely a throw and he let it go. Desi Moan punts it in high, did well. Conor McManus to win it. McManus spots the runner, the runner's name McAdam. McAdam as Sean Cavanagh was, he was there. Great overlap, oh. there's a snap of a goal on here. He just lost control at the crucial moment. It was the second half sub, Christopher McGinnis Martin, and it was a goal chance. Yeah, it's a great tackle by Conor Gormley. We talked about Desi Moore in the first half. That was a goal-saving tackle by Con that man, Conor Gormley. Remember the block in the All-Iron final, Mark, all them years ago? <laughs> Bram McGuigan, he's just away from Desi Moore. Lovely ball to Donnelly. Still Donnelly goes. Penrose is on the edge of the square. He's been bundled over. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. No hesitation whatever the referee, Martin. We will get a second look at it, but we were just commenting on the fact that he has a good championship debut. He was strong and purposeful in the run, and the ref's whistle sounded, and it was Desi Moan. It's Desi Moan coming back. And you have to get, get your body in, in first to see the tackle. And uh, it's here, is it? Well, it was Connor Gallagher, Gallagher and, and it the seemed tame enough. Yeah. This was outside. This would not have been a penalty. He's held him up. De de definitely the first three was there with the played the advantage. But you've got to, what you've got to do in that situation, Mark Conor Gallagher, is get your body goal side of the players apart. Listen, chance at the other end, Christopher McGuinness, goal chance to level the match down the field, right from that instant, and a penalty at the other end, and a chance to put six points in it. It'll be taken by Martin Penrose. Interestingly, not uh, 
Stephen O'Neill, Penrose the designated penalty taker. He will be up against Mark Kyo, the 24-year-old from uh, Sean McDermott's on his championship debut. And of course, no longer taken from the 13-meter line. It's the 11-meter spot which has been moved in. Martin Penrose, and this would be Tyrone, effectively home and host. Penrose, oh, he's put it wide. He has blazed a wide lifeline for Monaghan. And he's said to keep it the wrong way, Martin. Probably hit it too well, we see in here, just as he comes up to it. He's going to knock it in high into the corner. It's a well-hit penalty, but you've got to get, make sure it gets inside that post. Thank you. He said that, yeah, as he said, a lifeline for Monaghan. In fairness, I said that the chance was, a, was would take it back level, but there's actually four points on it. Sean Campbell got that point at the start of the second half. Definitely the lifeline for Monaghan, as you said, Mark. Desi Moan's ball, Ryan McManaman will uh, cut it out, Conor McManus with him, Cassidy now. Dermot Carlin, I think it's going to spill maybe over the side and it just came off the outside of the boot in a hurry. Conor Galligan. Even McInerney back in charge of a Monaghan outfit. For the first time since the late 90s, he's had a spell in Louth as well. Darren Hughes couldn't hold on to it. Can uh, Monaghan hold on to Ulster Championship football? Somehow, I just don't think so at the moment. That far has gone the way of uh, Tyrone. Davy Hart, he is uh, a glut of options and gets it back. Late tackle on Davy Hart. That will be taken from where the ball lands. Martin Penrose is in a hurry to take it. Brad McWigan had made a good run and uh, instead decides to give it to Stephen O'Neill. Stephen O'Neill in and out of the hands of Stephen O'Neill. Uh, Dispossessed, oh, that was late. Now, well, actually, the referee's telling him to get up and get on with it. Martin Penrose, he was well situated, but there was a, I suppose, he used the crowd as a yardstick for taking the temperature. Martin, look at it again, just here. I think it's Desi Moan as he comes in with the tackle here now to see Desi, and he catches him. Yeah. High. He just catches him with his hand hand up high. high. It's definitely, definitely a free. We'll see it here again. No, no question about that. Caught uh, him, uh, him high up. The ref had indicated, I thought, unless I misread it, I thought he'd indicated, get back on your feet and yeah, get on looked, with it. Look that way, he told him to get up, his, up get up right away off his feet. And uh, look at it here, as he, as he, as he, as he comes. He's called Martin Penrose over to him. And actually given a, I think a, he's given Martin Penrose a yellow card for what he says is simulation, but the camera clearly shows that that is not the case. And Martin K Penrose, for my money, has been given an unwarranted and very harsh yellow card, Martin. Yeah, it is. Just when we see it there. Okay. Look at it again. I mean, he's given the free in for, for the incident that happened afterwards. Desi Moan has the ball in his hand, and I think Desi knows well that, that it was a free in the in, in the first place. But it's a wrong yellow card. Yeah, and I don't think I can say in defence of Cormac Riley is maybe something was said in there, but definitely Martin Penrose has picked up a yellow. The only one thing remember to start the incident early on was Stephen Gilloway and, and Philip Jordan. I just said that that time that you know fair play to for Jordan for st staying on his feet or getting up right right away. Peter Hart landed one in the first half from the 45, lands the second in the second half. Uh, he's got a fine left boot on him. Uh, he says his one lament is, Martin, that he wishes his right boot was as good as his left for the sake of other counties. I'm kind of relieved that it's not. And that looks like uh, Kevin of the Younger is about to be sprung from the bench. The man who put this game to bed last year with a well-taken goal, Martin, when they met in the final. Yeah, it's, it's Peter Hart that he's taken off. So he feels he, that Peter Hart kicked the two long, long range freeze in that game. Doesn't the game come down? Cut tight at the end of the long range free mark to take, but Centres and Garfield's just McHugh, more experience on the field. It's a strange one. <laughs> but who are we to question Mickey Hart? Three All Irelands to his name, and looking actually for the record to land Tyrone's first ever three in a row of Ulster titles. Darren Hughes, he's bustled out of it, and Darren Hughes took a little slap at Brian Duher there. Thankfully, the little slap didn't make contact, but. It's just a sign of his frustration, Martin. Yeah, that's it. I mean, definitely a total frustration. Good tackling by, by Tyrone, but Monon, Monon need to score quickly, Mark. We need a few of them, Martin. Mark Downey to Paul Finlay. Rarely wastes the ball. That's a good one for Conor McManus. Conor McManus, uh, as, uh, as is his want, takes it very low to the ground, and uh, McManus has won the free. And Paul Finley presumably will take this one. I think he's going to take it off the ground. One thing Mickey Hart will be disappointing, Mark. He looks back at the matches, the amount of freeze they've given away, scorable freeze. And uh, you know, against better opposition, he 
be punished and it's a chance again for, for Paul Finley. Just yeah, they're not it. disciplined enough, particularly in their fullback. Yeah, for the record, it's a 20 second free conceded by Tyrone. This is Paul Finley and it's out of the arms or out of the hands and it puts four points between them. The free count in Monaghan is uh, yeah, it's just a little lower. Monaghan 17 they've conceded. Mickey Hart's outfit 22. Paul Finley sticks it over the bar. That's seven from the eight they've got from freeze mark. I think in the, in the game. They've only got one point. I think Monaghan have only got the one point from play. Tyrone 1 9. Monaghan 8 points. It's Dale mate in the middle. Davy Hart in possession. Davy Hart has a runner. Ten and a half minutes of the second half gone. Sean Cavanagh. Oh, well, he was rugby tackled there. And Neil McAdam. At one point, Martin, or at least for 10 or 15 minutes of the first half, it was threatening to be an ultra competitive, decent game despite the weather, but it really has it. Uh, kind of degenerated into a bit of an old arm wrestle this is Brian McGuigan who has certainly been a bright and shining light in the gloom here uh, Walsh was tugging on Martin Penrose's arm referee it was on the blind side of the referee and uh, in the end Desi Moan wins it takes the free quickly in front of him six red shirts and only two blue shirts they're going to have to retain possession Conor McManus has come a long, long way for it and has done well to win it. And has spun away from Dermot Carlin. Rice to McMenamin picks up the man marking job and McMenamin to reasonable effect sees the possession. Kick back to Tyrone. It's now with Sean Cavanagh. Sean Cavanagh has Stephen O'Neill screaming for it ahead of him. Stephen O'Neill now is the recipient. There's no one within 25 metres of Stephen O'Neill. Could there be a second goal on? Still O'Neill goes through to Sean Cavanagh. Cavanagh out of gallop. Cavanagh over the top and they just I don't know whether they opened up a hole in the Monaghan defence but it was shocking to see despite the fact that they're a man down that no one was within a bagel's guile of Stephen O'Neill there Martin yeah but just think if we go back to the other end Mark Ball and Connor Gormley you talk about great fuckers that think on their feet brainy fuckers he played in front won the ball and that's where the score came from but again John Cavan's having a great match in that, in that midfield area with Darden Cues into the middle of the field uh, picking him up now at this stage but I think he's, make, he's making the difference he's getting on the end and the end of moves but Stephen O'Neill looks very very sharp but that, that's it sums up the difference in the two teams that score Donald Morgan is in Connor Gallagher is on a yellow card is out Morgan wearing 18 kick out has been taken it's won by Desi Moan gives it inside of Mark Downey. Downey now forced to check back onto the right foot and the diagonal ball. Dermot Carlis building it. McManus could be in. Second clear for a penalty. Referee's given it. There's a second penalty. Yep. Absolutely no question about it. He was about to pull the trigger when the foot was taken from him, Martin. And here's the point I will make to you. Dermot Carlin should have let this ball go wide. It's exactly it was right. going Martin. wide. You're exactly right, he should let the ball go wide, there's no need for him to play it at all, I don't know, did he get a call from the keeper now, you see it coming in here, it's a long hopeful ball, and Dermot Carlin did everything right, he was in front of his man, just took his eye off the, off the ball, and it's racing, Ryan McMenamin is playing as the spare man, definitely, you know, Conor McManus was pulling the trigger to, to hit the net, and, and he just winks up at somebody there, just letting <laughs> no one is great, and gets us back into the game. Yeah. There's Darren Cues, who played in goals last year in the championship <laughs> against our man, is going to now take this penalty. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, it's Big Packy, who actually, if I memory serves me correctly, no, he, yeah, he two point blank saves from both the Freeman boys in last year's also final, but not a penalty. You know what's very interesting this, Mark? If you'd have forward taken that left footed, you would know what side he's probably going to go to. You've actually a natural defender coming up. Sometimes, you know, what he's going to do is he just going to go. Sheer yeah. power, probably that's what he'll do. See Big Packy moving over and back in the, in the goal line. And Conor McManus uh, has done a Cristiano Ronaldo with that little wink, but, well, it would bring the gap back to two. We've already seen one miss. Darren Hughes is shaping like he's going to give this a good old agricultural welly. Hughes against Big Packy Hughes. He gave it the old welly. It's into the back of the net, and they are, well, not quite back, but the lifeline again, Martin, needlessly thrown in. We didn't quite see it, but Dermot Carlin definitely, as we look at, well, hey, that's a good penalty. He was. That's how we talked about it. He, he went to he hit the keeper the wrong way and uh, just kept it down. And that's what you have to do in these conditions. That's a mistake Martin Pembers made. He hit the penalty too high. Game on now, hopefully. It will keep Tyrone honest and it will certainly rise him. This is Paul Finley. Paul Finley gives it into the second half sub. Christopher McGuinness. 
McGuinness looking for Conor McManus. Dermot Carlin again alongside of McManus conceded the free. Or I should say Dermot Carlin has conceded the free. I don't understand why Mickey Hart doesn't make a switch there. I think Dermot Carlin's struggling. And he's going to book him, I think. Yeah, he's struggling with Conor no, McManus. Like Conor Gormley's doing really well in Paul Finlay in fullback. He's struggling, he's struggling in that fullback. And whether you put Philip Jordan back in, move Martin Swift across on him, but I think he needs to make a move on Conor McManus. Yeah, and it looks like we are going to see the introduction of Sean O'Neill from Dremore. And it will be uh, Martin, Dermot Carlin. And Dermot Carlin, if this goes over in the space of 60 seconds, has arguably cost her own 1-1. Uh, we didn't get a look at uh, the long ball in, but I felt that Carlin should have simply let that ball go wide. You pointed up that Packy McConnell might have given him a call. Uh, but for, you know, for all of us, for all of the debate, we're saying that the game hasn't quite lived up to expectations it has been so full of incident martin yeah, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's a big talk is the two penalties that the one missed it one in by Fenris, which would have put them to what seven points ahead mark to only be seven points. game over differences down the field the penalty at the other end how, how a game can turn and now the momentum's with with mona definitely that substitution's been made on the far side yeah and, and it's maybe worth pointing up martin that Toronto so haven't won a championship game here since 2005, 2008. They drew with Down, went on to be beaten. 2006, you'll recall, they managed just five points and lost this, against Derry. Yeah, is it Ryan McMenamin that's been taken off on the, over on the far side? Dermot Carlin. No, it's Dermot Carlin. Dermot Carlin, sorry. Just yeah. picking up on the far side. You're right, yes. Dermot Carlin has gone off on the far side after picking up that yellow card. And it's a whole, I suppose, it's never great, Martin, when you've been brought on as a sub and are taken off. But look, them's the breaks. This is Conor McManus to put one point between the McManus. It's gone wide. It was Paul Finlay, I think, who just got a touch to it. But that would have panicked Toronto if it had gone over, Martin. Yeah, you're right, Martin. But do you want to point to me? When a player gets injured sometimes, like Conor McManus picked up the injury, we've seen him kicking this free if they're after picking up an injury. I think sometimes you shouldn't give that free to a player that, that's picked up the injury. But they went over and you, if they'd put it back to a point there, really put pressure. Toronto taking a lot of short kickouts, using the extra man. This is Colum Cavanagh. Possession is vital now. One thing Tyrone will not do is uh, panic. This is Davy Hart. Davy Hart looking for Colin Cavanagh. Possession has been given away. It was intercepted there by uh, James Turley. Turley now and has returned the compliment. Aidan Cassidy. To Duhart. Duhart's handling just let him down but we'll excuse him that as he nibbles it back up at the second attempt it's a poor ball though from Brandeur possession has been kicked away and uh, precisely at the midpoint of the second half and Martin it's well next score will be a telling one oh, you're right Martin it's, it's messy football but it's shooting Mon and they, they've been a happier team there but James uh, Turley and uh, Brian McGuigan Gives it to Stephen O'Neill. Stephen O'Neill is in a hurry. Desi moans alongside him. Stephen O'Neill onto the right foot from a very tight angle. Stephen O'Neill. That is just majestic of it. That is one of the most sumptuous points, Martin, that I have seen in championship football. Naturally left-footed, naturally one of the most gifted footballers in Ireland. And he sold both of them a pup here. Yeah, uh, there's something that you'd say. He's back, there's no doubt about it, but I think it's great. Everybody, you know that we are defender, Mark, and you're going to watch his left foot. You've been coached to watch his left foot. Put him under pressure, put him onto his right foot, and he does that. And that's an important score. That puts three points in it, as you said in the comedy. The next score is important, and mistake by Monin and, and that brain will go again to Stephen Lee. Just that bit of class that the two of them have. Three, three points different. separate them on the scoreboard, and uh, three also separate them in wide. Throne six wides. Monaghan three wides, to Tyrone 111, Monaghan 1-8, Monaghan uh, on the attack but they couldn't quite control it, it was Owen Duffy and it's uh, just so greasy out there, you have to factor that in whenever you're examining this game. On, Mark Downey. Penalised will be Mark Donnelly and uh, Cormac Riley. I think he's going to have a word, is he? I think Owen Mulligan is about to be sprung as well, Martin, and uh, that would not surprise. He's warming up anyway. Not a bad substitution to have, Mark. No, uh, there are some who, an eyebrow or two raised that he wasn't in in the first place, but I think he might be labouring with the hamstrings. This is uh, Kieran Duffy from corner back. It's hanging. It's hanging. Could go anywhere. <laughs> It was picked off the ground. It was picked off the ground. It's Martin Swift, and it will be a free. So Martin Swift, and uh, 
it's a softish one to concede. That's what the referee has said, anyway, Martin. Yeah. Martin Swift penalised. We might just get another look at it here. Watch for uh, Tyrone's number two as this ball breaks. Now he gets that initial hand to it. Here we go. Ah, come on. And the referee's standing right beside it. Was it was bouncing. Bouncing to it. I'm saying the referee standing right beside it. We're talking about one of the top referees in the country. That's, big, that's, a, that's a mistake again by, by, by the referee. Yeah. Well, it looked to me like it was six inches off the ground. This is Conor McManus. And it's two points between them. And we have 15 minutes to go. Monaghan, for the record, haven't beaten Tyrone in Championship football since 1988. That, of course, the last time Monaghan won a provincial title. Mark, you know what's interesting? You look at the scoreboard. Uh, Monaghan scored 1-9, uh, they're two points uh, down, and they've only got one point from play. Monaghan, the, penalty, the goal came from penalty, and, uh, and eight frees, and just the one point from play. It's a day for the free take. That's Dermot Malone who's in. And, uh, again, it's... Uh, James and Turley, I think, who's making way. And Martin Penrose has been uh, called ashore on a watery old day in Healy Park. And it's Owen Mulligan who is in. So we've 15 minutes to play, and we've just two points separating them, and it's Tyrone who wrestled position. Connor Gormley giving it back. Now, Colum Cavanagh. Hauled up by Lennon and held up illegally. To his brother Sean. Now with Brad Duher. Davy Hart's in a good position down the right flank. If Duher can spot him, Davy Hart was the intended target. I think the hand that got in there was from Owen Duffy. The ball has uh, gone over. Some of the uh, foot passing thrown have been very poor. So you're kicking away a lot of ball. It's hard enough to win possession daily, guys, and you have to got to get the ball to hand. And you've kicked away a lot of possession. It's going to be a nervous closing 10, 15 minutes, Martin, for both sides. Yeah, definitely, Mike. We're looking at nearly 22 minutes on, on the clock, and it's just that, that two points between them. Owen Duffy. Checks back, does Kieran Duffy to Lennon. Now with Owen Duffy. The Duffy's combining. <laughs> and then comes the lateral ball for Finley to attempt to get on to. It's Bram McGuigan who picks up the break. Has uh, Donnelly ahead of him. Donnelly only has Stephen and Neil ahead of him. The keepers come off his line. Brand Duher making a great run back inside. Donnelly goes right to Brian McGuigan and Brian McGuigan dispossessed. It was a fine tackle in there. I think it was Donald Morgan who maybe got the tackle in. Eventually, ball makes its way to Colin Cavanagh. Connor Gormley spills forward down the left flank is Philip Jordan. Philip Jordan is the intended target. Owen Mulligan will make the decoy. This is now Mulligan. Neat little dummy from Mulligan. And uh, Owen Mulligan announces his return to championship football. Martin, for all of Stephen and Neil's brilliance, that smacked of class. One shimmy, took two defenders out of play and pops it over the top. Great score. Yeah, I'm just laughing at how long he's playing Gaelic football now and he keeps selling that dummy and he gets away with it all the time, Mark. That's him, dummy, but he's just saying, look at lads, I've come off the bench here to show you how, how it's done and I want my place on the team for the, for the next day. Great, great score. Good work by Jerome. They worked hard to get that score. Well, brilliant finish. I see he's tattooed on the right arm is our Muggsy. Sticks another point on the scoreboard. Tyrone won 12, Monaghan won 9. Still only the kick of a ball by Keenan. Good uh, body check on Sean Kavanagh there from Dermot Malone. Eventually, Kavanagh. Here's the whistle sound. Cassidy to Brian McGuigan. Always the fulcrum. Always funneled through McGuigan. Now Ricey McManaman. And. Uh, I think that's the first time I've seen Ricey go beyond midfield, which is uncharacteristic of him. Cut out by Owen Duffy. Owen Duffy looks for Connor McManus. Connor McManus was uh, actually Paul Finlay, I should say, was shunted out of it by Connor Gormley. Brian McWigan, he's always so adept at breaking the tackle. And I think uh, it was maybe Mark Downey who got the block in. Mulligan gives it to Gormley to Colm Cavanagh. Stephen O'Neill. Let's see how the legs are. Of course, he's been plagued by injury. He's out of play, but the ball was still in. Stephen O'Neill looking for goal! Stephen O'Neill does the sensible thing. And Martin, 
And I tell you what, the one on the other side was a thing of absolute beauty. That was about persistence and endeavour and accuracy, and it was cheeky. Just look at the pick-up, Mark, with the left foot. He left a player for dead with the, with the quality of his pick-up. Was impetus. Then the dummy, and then with his right hand, fisted the ball. You know, the right way, he closed his fist as well. That's that's probably the best score we've, we've yeah. had we've had today. O'Neill, O'Neill. I, I, from I still think the best score was his right foot one on the other on the other side. But I take your point, and that there was just something so polished about that. This is Darren Hughes, who's got a little bit of polish in his own right foot. Found the net with a penalty. That's one one from Darren Hughes. So again, Martin, it keeps him in touch. Yeah, it keeps him in touch, and again, to won't take a short kick out, Martin. Get get on with it quickly. 25 minutes of the second half gone, the reigning Ulster champions, Tyrone won 13, Monaghan won 10, Ricey McManaman in possession, Ricey McManaman looks for Davy Hart, Davy Hart has a one Lennon to contend with and the ball spills away just beyond Davy Hart, Hart back inside to Cassidy, Cassidy has a shot, it was well blocked down in there by Big Lennon. Lennon now hungry for it, Monaghan are certainly not out of it, it's Colin Walsh who picks it up, Walsh sees possession spill the way of the halfbacks and the whistle sounds and this will be a free to be taken by Desi Moan for Monaghan, ten minutes remaining, De he gives it to Mark Downey, Mark Downey now looks for movement, he has Kieran Duffy going through the middle, he has Dermot uh, Malone out wide right, this is Dermot Malone, Philip Jordan along with Malone giving it back inside to Mark Downey, they're trying to pick the perfect pass. Downey gives it back to Moan. Moan now with the runner. The runner's Darren Hughes, arguably Monaghan's best player. Great block comes in there from Colin McCullough. Desi or uh, Hughes has stayed down. This is Sean Cavanagh. Sean Cavanagh has Martin Swift alongside him. Martin Swift now with a swift ball down the line to the swift man and blonde who is Owen Mulligan. And not even Owen Mulligan should have tried that. It was an outrageous attempt with the outside of the boot, Martin but it was a, a good fluid movement down the left flank. Uh, and he's had two pops at goal, one from two, and that's not too bad. Darren Hughes, by the way, uh, who was a victim of that heavy block and perfectly legal block by Colin McCullough. Let's hope he gets back on the feet. Yeah, I think both players and Colin Cameron is down as well from, from that injury seat, both and picking up that injury. But Monaghan have been punished any time the ball breaks down. It's important to keep the ball going to hand and run with the ball up the field and maybe even one of three. That's the best thing to do, rather than kicking a ball into two men against three, three inside. But to see it here again. This is Lennon. It's a great block. It's a great thing to see in Gilly Fopples block where you block the ball in general. This is the other, other great block. I mean, that's that's a that's a great art in Gilly Fopple to see that. The pe players are prepared to throw their body in certain conditions of being else in there to, to make that block cause. But it's just interesting from a throne point of view, Mark, is that the big players have made the difference. The the Connor Gormleys particularly, the Stephen o Stephen O'Neill's we talked about it, you know, Mulligan coming off the bench kicking the points, Sean Cavan and Brian McGuigan, we named them, they were the big yeah. men today. And yeah. they, they you know, when, when when the pressure was on, you know, they were there. So it's from that point of view it's good 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 for Mickey Hart. Colin Kavanagh rising. It was well won in there by Colin Walsh. Yeah, uh, Martin, you always see things with a much more educated footballing eye, but for my money, uh, Brian McGuigan has been an absolute delight to watch. Just his ability to break the tackle and pick the pass, and ju uh, he's just one of those players you could... got stronger, which is a good thing for him, for himself in playing the way he plays his football. He's, as you said, he's able to break the tackle. See him even tackling here now with a hand, getting the hand in. It was Colin Walsh who gave the ball down the line. I think it's going to spin off Conor McManus, and this will be a Tyrone ball. Um, I think Monaghan are about to introduce Bernard O'Brien, and it's uh, maybe Owen Duffy who's going to be called to show. That is uh, definitely Bernard O'Brien. Sean Kavanagh. The runner down the right is Martin Swift. Swartz gives it to Philip Jordan. Swift was had his run checked. This is uh, Owen Mulligan. Owen Mulligan had three options there, one of whom was Aidan Cassidy. Cassidy gives it now to Colum. Kavanagh, Colum, Kavanagh. I don't know if the Desi Moon got a touch on it or not, but the, the shot was tame. Christopher McGuinness. We are told that he is a really gifted footballer, and Brian McGuigan has come in with a high tackle. The referee is happy enough to say no booking required, and to be fair to Christopher McGuinness, he's quickly back on his feet. Um, you could say it was a bit cynical uh, in that they were on the they were on the attack, Martin. Yeah, he just got his hand across him, and I think we talked about that physical strength he's got there. <laughs> Don't know, and Chris, forgive, forget his Christmas McGuinness. But up, up at the, the other end, you know, when, when we look at it, Tyrone kicked a stupid ball into the goalkeeper's hands from Colin Cabinet, and against better teams, that's the kind of thing you'd be punished for. And it's important, yeah, they kick it wide or kick it over the bar or make the right decision that was made by likes of Stephen O'Neill in the first half, where if the goal chance is on, you go for it. It was right to take the point. Do that. You have to make them decisions on. The field players have to make them decisions themselves. 
Darren Hughes with the big boot. I think it's just about kept in play. You know, it's gone wide. The referee, you know, uh, uh, Martin, the point you were making earlier on, that, that free was Tyrone's 33rd. Mickey Hart won't be happy, and they will have to work on the discipline. Yeah, definitely. Number Considering the conditions that we have today, because I mean, we look at the Monon scoreline. If you what is it, one ten, and we, do we say that that most of them? Well, Darren Hughes has got who's playing around the middle of the half back, and he's got the goal from a penalty. He's got one point from play. They only got one other score from play in the game, and the rest scores come from free. So that's one thing he's going to have to improve on, because there's a lot of good free takers in the country now, and they will punish you. Other than that, he'll be happy enough. And you see there, uh, Aidan Cassidy has played his last. The hub Hughes is in, and also confirmation that Owen Duffy has gone off and in has come Bernard O'Brien. Uh, Ricey McMenamin gives the ball back to Packy. And Packy back outside of him into the path of Sean O'Neill. Sean O'Neill to Brian McWigan. And it's about keeping possession at the minute. Three points, still the difference. Sean O'Neill couldn't hold on to it. Uh, we have four minutes plus injury time to be played. And again, it's Sean Cavanaugh with the free to Connor Gormley. Connor Gormley gives it back inside to Davy Hart to Owen Mulligan. We could be talking about 03, we could be talking about 08, we could be talking about arguably the greatest side ever to have come out of Ulster. Well, actually, there's no argument. They are the greatest side in terms of these All-Ireland winners, but Colin Walsh to Darren Hughes. He's been impressive today. This is Lennon, and Lennon has been uh, tripped. Dermot Malone leaves it for Darren Hughes. Good run uh, down the right from Kieran Duffy if he picks him out. He can't pick Duffy out. Now can Duffy pick out his points, that's uh, wildly ambitious, McManus rising Finley rising and still there it's Brian McGuigan and I think Brian McGuigan has conceded the 45 but uh, his work rate Martin has been phenomenal yeah it has we see the high ball Monaghan seem to want to kick high ball on top of the full back lane, feeling that's going to cause them problems in there. But it's all right early on when Tyrone had an extra man, but when Tyrone allowed to drop Ryan McMenamin back there in front of the full back lane, because that's where Brian McWiggan plays. But maybe the Tyrone are dropping too deep at this stage. They have an extra player. They should hold the shape, and keep up the field, and go on and you know get. I mean, there's still only one kick of a ball between it. Get extra extra scores. Is Darren Hughes going to take this free? We know how good he is off the ground for long range kicks. But I think Tyrone have lost the shape. But they're going back to defend the lead, which is a dangerous thing to do in Gaelic football. Just over two minutes to go, and this would put two points between them. He missed the last one from a similar distance. This one's going short. Sean Kavanagh rises, and the fist was gotten to it. And the fist was gotten to it from Christopher McGuinness, but it's gone wide. Christopher McGuinness kept the eye on it, but Martin, here we go. Yeah, you see it here. Some of the smallest man getting, it, getting his fist on it. Just lucky he's gone, gone wide. And if a ball like that can end up anywhere, it's a bad kick out again here from Bonham. Kick out uh, straight down the throat of Darren Hughes. Darren Hughes has been hauled down around the throat by Colin Cavanaugh. Uh, and uh, again, it was it was cynical, Martin, and this is the reason that he's going to pick up a yellow card. So Colin Cavanaugh goes into the book. I think they have to work on, on their tackling to roll. I think no one getting their body in on the tackle and working that there rather than giving away freeze like that there because they're picking up mm. too many too many yellow yeah, cards. Because the point is, Martin, I had Monaghan uh, a. a dedicated if you like free taker with the right boot this could have been bringing them level they've missed the last two frees which were arguably scorable this to put two between them Tyrone 113 Monaghan 110 Paul Finlay big packy comes big packy collects once and gets assistance from Swift couldn't hold on to it Brian Duhur is going to spill candy for Ollie Lennon or Owen Lennon I should say Paul Finlay to make amends and Dawes, and Dawes. Minute and a half to play. Two points in it. It's a dangerous lead, Mark. A two point lead. It's Kerry when they're going for five in a row, found out. I just think you're, you're worried about the free ticket. And and Peter Hart kicked the two long range points for, for Toronto off the ground. If Monan had a long range free ticket to kick the points, they've been, they've been leveled this stage. So, um, well, possession is now absolutely crucial. One red card, two penalties, 100 talking points. Austin will debate those post this match. Brian McWigan, for my money, a contender for man of the match. That too to be determined. 
Desi Moon back with them, and McGuigan uh, has eventually been hustled out of it by uh, Mark Downey. Mark Downey with a good lateral ball. Monaghan, one last hurrah. This is now with Dermot Malone. Malone sprays it. Was there holding going on off the ball? Referee says no. Ricey McMenamin intercepts. Conor McManus was protesting that uh, Martin Swift had uh, impeded him illegally. Now Sean Kavanagh, Muggsy Mulligan, they run down the clock, I'm sure. We are into injury time the 35 minutes are now up on mulligan gives it to davy hart davy hart back to mugsy mugsy looks for donnelly over the top donnelly has done well to win that it's been knocked out of his hand though by Owen lennon Owen lennon has been bludgeoned to the ground by the hub huge it's actually not Owen lennon but it's a free for monaghan and the referee will have it retaken because he's going to give a yellow card away if uh, the uh, of Hughes and let me see Martin I make that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yellows and one red and uh, this is the reason yeah it was uh, Donald Morgan it was who was uh, hauled down I didn't quite hear what time there will be added on but Mark Kill needs to get it forward we are nearing the 36th minute Desimone to Colin Walsh Mark Downey's looking for it Mark Downey receives it I think they've got to try and get it in quickly we're into the second minute now of time to be added on Downey's ball's a poor one very very poor one Donnelly to Ricey McManaman to Owen Mulligan oh that was very high on Philip Jordan and that could be red Oh, it's kicking off. I think it was Desi Moon with a high tackle. And uh, now Owen Mulligan's in there. And uh, Colin was too in the midst of it. But it was high and it was late. And it's Philip Jordan who's gone to ground. And as we are looking at this uh, messy situation, uh, to, you don't want to preempt the referee, Martin, but from, from my money, it was a red card. It was a red card for Desi Moon. Uh, if the referee saw it. And I'm sure he, did. he was right up with play. Yeah, he was. I think it was a wee bit. Tyrone were holding on to the ball, as you were saying in the comedy, trying to run down the clock, Mark, and just yeah. to see the tackle. It's a straight right card. There were complaints about, about that there. That they're looking at. No, Desi's having, having his own save. But in part, when you when you want to score at the other end, it's important to try to keep the play. And Desi doing that. They're down to 13 men, and it's to Clerk and Desi Moan sent off. Ten yellows, two reds, two penalties, uh, and there arguably could have been a third red, but for the fact that Stephen Golligley was sneaked off the pitch. That's, uh, well, and this is it, Martin. It's just, oh, it's yeah, just a ugly and unnecessary and unwelcome, Martin. Yeah, it's a dangerous tackle, uh, very, yeah. very dangerous tackle. There's no doubt the referee got it right. It definitely is a, a straight red card. And Desi Morgan has been a great uh, serve. Something has happened off the ball between Owen Mulligan and Colin Walsh. Colin Walsh off camera has stayed down. I'm not sure if the linesman saw it, but... Uh, it's not the way we want the game to end. No, Mark. it's not it's the way we want it to end. It's now. not at all. Uh, <laughs> Monaghan down to 13. Tyrone, well, you would imagine are into a semi final of the Ulster Championship. And we will play the winners of Donegal and Cavan again, incidentally, which you can see uh, on the 26th of June. Gavin Donegal play next Sunday and uh, he's consulting Cormac uh, Riley the referee with what the assistants and the linesmen saw uh, I actually didn't see it myself Martin it happened off the ball but I know it was Colin Walsh who went down and I know that he and Mulligan had had a little spat prior to this when uh, Desi Mona picked up the red card so he hasn't seen it and his linesman evidently hasn't seen it Darren Hughes says he saw it it's got very, very messy. You don't want to see players getting onto referees. Let the players play and let the referee and 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 his, his umpires and, and linesmen uh, do that job. And one of players are not happy at all, and uh, they're just referees playing on. He didn't see it. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't caught. Uh, uh, we can't see it there, Martin. Just that's it. It's all over. 39 minutes and eight seconds played. Tyrone advance to. An Ulster Provincial semi-final, Eamon McEnany, I suspect, is none too happy. Just two points separated, and good to see Eamon McEnany shake the hand of both Brian Duhur and Conor Gormley. It was a game 
high on incident. It was a game high on energy. It was a game ultimately in which Mickey Hart and his men have prevailed, but no shortage of talking points, not least the sendings off, not least the rash of yellow cards, and of course the penalties. One converted, one missed. Final score here in Healy Park. It's Tyrone, one goal and 13 points. Monaghan, one goal and 11. Um, assessment is we're relieved to have won the game. Uh, we were in a strong position a number of times during the game. I suppose when the opposition lose a man, you ought to be able to exploit that. We did to a degree, but we didn't finish it off. And I suppose when we missed our penalty, that I think would have put the game out of sight for Monaghan. And they came back and got one then. It was very much game on again. You mentioned the red card, a flurry of yellows as well. Do you feel it were justified? Well, it's difficult to make an assessment. The referee is the one who has to make the call on those. Um, I suppose, it's again, it's getting that consistency that seems to be very difficult to do. Uh, but it wasn't an easy game to referee out there. The conditions and everything else, Ulster Championship, the intensity of the game, um, you have to leave the referee to do his business. And I suppose there's assistance now from people who can look retrospectively at this afterwards and see if there's anything else needs to be added to it. But sure, that's, that's, that's what the world we're in nowadays. A lot of the so-called... Sorry. Manners. We're doing TV interviews. Sorry. Sorry, Mike. Right. A lot of the old guard performed very well today, the likes of Conor Gormley, Bram McGuigan. What can you say about their performances? Well, I don't have to say anything about it. I, I know what those men can do, and that's why they're playing on the team. You know, a lot of other people seem to be preoccupied with their age. I certainly am not. I, I, I'm pleased with their age because the age they've arrived at and the football they've played means they're very seasoned and experienced campaigners, and uh, th those are the kind of players you need to win championship matches. On a personal note, it's the first championship game without Michaela by your side. How difficult was it for you? Obviously, you'd be aware it was very difficult. Um, difficult leaving the house today. It's difficult being here. Um, I do miss her, obviously, dearly. So do we all. Um, but I do feel she's always with me. And um, I think she would have been around a few rosaries there today before that game was over. Thanks for your time, Mickey. Well, I'm tremendously proud of my players. You know, we came down here today, very much the underdogs. A new team, a lot of players making their championship debut. And... You know, to run, to run that close, we would have to be pleased, especially when we played a large part of the game with 14 men. Two reds, a lot of yellows. Um, do you feel they were justified? Uh, I wouldn't like to comment on that. That's to be honest with you, Thomas, because I certainly feel that there was men today that didn't have great games. Are you suggesting the referee, perhaps? I wouldn't suggest anything, but you know, I think everybody has to examine their own performance, and a lot of people need to take a look at what they were doing out today, and including our players who, who committed fouls maybe when they shouldn't have been committing fouls and giving balls away when they shouldn't. But I think this game, you know, there's so much put into it and so much time and effort put in. I think that everybody has to examine their performance and look and say and hold their hands up if they made mistakes. We certainly do, or have to.